Thank you, ma'am. Like every year, life has something promising. We are lucky to be here this year as the prime focus this time is on medical disorders related to infertility and beyond. The highlights being preconceptional evaluation, challenges encountered during assisted reproduction, pregnancy monitoring and surveillance, and postpartum risk modulation in women with medical disorders. I am sure Life Conference 2019 will provide a wonderful forum for us all to explore the latest innovations in the field. We once again welcome and thank you all for being here. Hope it is a great learning experience. Enjoy the conference. Moving on to our first session, pre-diabetes, also called as intermediate hyperglycemia, is a high-risk profile for diabetes. It is a state with glucose parameters higher than normal, but lower than the threshold limit set for the diagnosis. And HbA1c has been a long-term robust marker for determining variability in glycemic status. In the opening session, we have with us Dr. Satish Babu, the head of Department of Endocrinology, Spursh Hospital, Bangalore. He has obtained his five-year fellowship from Cambridge University Hospital and King's College of London. He is also the lead coordinator of Divine Mother and Child Health Program. He is here to speak on how predictive is the HbA1c in screening for pre-diabetes in infertility evaluation. I extend a very warm welcome to Dr. Satish Babu sir and call upon him to deliver his talk. Good morning. Very good morning and uh, uh, first of all thanks to Dr. Kamini and Life Conference a committee to invite me to give a talk on HPA1C. Uh, I hope uh, I'll be the, uh, I'll do my job as an opening batsman to this conference uh, justice. Thank you. So that as you know, the title pre-diabetes. Pre-diabetes is becoming very common uh, in the world nowadays. And in last 10 to 15, last 10 to 15 years, we have seen that diabetes is growing exponentially. And pre-diabetes itself is being defined as a as a, a as a condition which affects different parts of the body. So so. The authorities, WHO, ADA, American, uh, sorry, European Association, is is sort of putting forth uh, a guideline to to see if pre-diabetes should be treated as diabetes. So that's the that's where the pre-diabetes stands at the moment. And and uh, if you see the the incidence is almost reaching 8%, 7%, and, and more so what we see uh, as obstetricians and fertility experts are, is that the, the uh, hyperglycemia in pregnancy is becoming more and more common, and, and that's where the, and, and that contributes to the health of the baby. There is there is a lot of studies, research going into fetal programming and, and probably it predates to pre-pregnancy state as well. So metabolic, metabolic parameters being normal pre-pregnancy is very crucial and, and that's where this science is moving very fast and fetal medicine and fetal uh, programming is becoming part of uh, fertility treatment. And India, as you all know, as is competing with China in all aspects and even it, uh, in diabetes, India has, is second leading uh, country with diabetes and pre-diabetes. And what is stark contrast with Western world and India or uh, South Asian countries is diabetes is anger. As early as 1992, there was a study done in Southall, that is outer part of the, or uh, suburb of London, and there itself, the, uh, in 92, they found that diabetes in Asians or Indians was 10 years er earlier. The A Caucasians had diabetes at 66, and Indians had diabetes at 56. And that trend is continuing to worsen, means to say becoming anger. So our population are what you all and what I see. Anger, reproductive age, uh, individuals becoming 
pre-diabetic and diabetic, more so when compared to Caucasians. And there are even studies in India showing uh, different uh, prevalence rate uh, among different states. And uh, what, what is the pathophysiology, that dual pathophysiology is the hallmark. There are other components like incretin, pancreatic, uh, islet cell dysfunction. But what is crux is insulin resistance and relative insulin deficiency. As the insulin resistance worsens, your insulin making capacity, beta cell dysfunction worsens. So insulin uh, production in initially compensates and insulin production goes up as you can see in the graph red line. But, but subsequently with aging, insulin deficiency, relative insulin deficiency per hyperglycemia for hyperglycemia becomes evident and that's when diabetes or pre-diabetes sets in. And if you see the disease process is almost 20 years predates to the date of diabetes, date of diagnosis of diabetes. So your pre-diabetes is almost 10, 15, 20 years in each individuals. And that's getting again worse with lifestyle uh, uh, changes and lifestyle, modern lifestyle uh, what we lead. So current, you all know current diagnostic criteria. What is new is HbA1c. Last four to five years, HbA1c has become after this publication, after 2011, one, uh, one study which showed that HbA1c can be used as diagnostic tool, ADA, uh, uh, at a committee and they decided that HbA1c can be used as a diagnostic criteria and 6.5 is what the criteria for uh, diagnosis based on HbA1c. We'll look into that. Uh, so what is important here is you all know the normal traditional way of uh, diagnosing diabetes but but what we have HbA1c as an added tool and pre-diabetes is what is uh, important for today's talk. So, so pre-diabetes on all three components, 100 to 125 in, fast, uh, in fasting blood sugar, 140 to 199 in postprandial, and 5.7 to 6.4 is what the cut off. And all three, if you take all each individual uh, uh, expression or uh, all three together, as the uh, as the value worsens, so is the predictability. So lower you have lower risk higher you have higher risk and that's probably you see that even in clinical practice. So when you, when you look into the traditional oral glucose tolerance test and how the pre-diabetes that is impaired fasting glucose, impaired glucose tolerance, impaired fasting glucose, how many will become uh, diabetic in uh, diabetes, how many will develop diabetes in future? You have a study which shows that they remain normal, normal remain, uh, they remain at 11 years normal in 24%, diabetes in 46%, and impaired glucose tolerance in 30%. That is, impaired glucose tolerance converting to normal is 24%. That's what uh, the that, that's, that study showed. So almost same figures if you take uh, uh, impaired fasting glucose. So, so both have a strong predictive value of a future onset of diabetes. This this uh, traditional method still holds good. You all know the risk factors. Uh, why again the risk factors are important? Pre-diabetes is a state where you can reverse it. You saw that. You saw in the slide that uh, both impaired glucose tolerance individual and impaired fasting glucose individuals became normal. Significant numbers became normal, and means to say they they converted themselves from deep pre-diabetes to normal state. So you need to understand who are at risk and regularly do the tests, whatever you want to do, and uh, try to modify their lifestyle. Is pre-diabetes important? As I said, it's, it's moving in a direction where it can it be labeled as a diabetes itself or can it be labeled as a disease itself? So why? Because there is a strong predilection for becoming diabetic, diabetes and diabetes is a chronic disease. So can it be reversed? DP DPP study that is diabetes prevention program showed this uh, uh, that it's a, it has a strong predilection for future onset of diabetes and and high risk of macrovascular and microvascular complication is what is important and we are talking about uh, uteroplacental 
vascular component when you're talking about pregnancy, so micro and macrovascular complications in vitro pre fertility plays a big role with hyperglycemia, although there are no specific studies to look into as we have in micro, other microvascular or microvascular complications. We know that microvascular complications uh, start early, uh, that is CVD risk starts early, and, and even microvascular complications ac across HbA1c worsening, the microvascular complications worsen and all this as HPA1C as a diagnostic or a, as a complication monitoring tool. So, so again coming back to the HPA1C importance. Effect of uh, uh, diabetes on fertility, I don't have much data on pre-diabetes but definitely there is sufficient data studied, researched data to show that male and female fertility gets affected with hyperglycemia, we'll not go into that. What is key is 1% of HbA1c reduction means to say uh, if you are talking about uh, pre-diabetes 6 to say even 0.5%, 5.5% reduction means to say 6 to 5.5 HbA1c reduction gives a huge benefit across both micro and macrovascular complications. This you can extrapolate to fetal medicine or fetal fertility issues as well. As again, there is no much data in that field. So this we saw. Uh, so current traditional way of diagnosing uh, diabetes is fasting glucose, postprandial glucose, oral glucose tolerance test, although HbA1c been added recently. Other forms are there, let's look into. HbA1c, if you talk about what is the method or what is the philosophy, n terminal way line of hemoglobin beta chain gets glycated. So, so they separate the glycated and non-glycated hemoglobin and that's how the percentage is derived. It tells the glucose levels in for last 12 weeks because RBC lifespan is at uh, 120 days. So intraday, intra or interday variations doesn't eff affect HPA1C as you see in fasting and postprandial glucose. Diabetes is a disease of a day, minute and hour. So this this, uh, I, uh, this glycemic variability plays a role in uh, diagnostic test, so HbA1c becomes important tool, and more so, hyperglycemia or diabetes is a chronic, it tells the chronicity, so you have to have a collective value, so that's where the HbA1c value increases, so again, there, is, there are, uh, there are uh, uh, so how it, is, how it is derived, there are multiple studies, we'll not go into that, and again, there are uh, standardization of HbA1c. Again, no need to go into that. This slide is important. This, these studies showed the predictability of HbA1c. And, and if you see, almost 73 to 79% sensitive in uh, two tests. One had a low spe sensitivity. Specificity, 96, 88, and 82. This is for diagnosing diabetes, not pre-diabetes, again. But, but that tells the, uh, again, pre-diabetes, is there a study to show uh, uh, in comparison to oral glucose tolerance tests? There is no study. But it, with, this, with, this, with these studies, we can extrapolate that it, is a strong, it has a strong predictive value. What are the drawbacks? You know, oral glucose tolerance is a test is a cumbersome test. You have to fast, come empty stomach and you sit in the lab for uh, almost three hours and 75 grams of uh, glucose can give nausea and other uh, and you you use other medicines in fertility treatment all this interferes with uh, with uh, the execution of tests so it's less standardized uh, less well established index of overall glycemic exposure in especially for long term uh, uh, issues like fertility and, and uh, intraday variability, which we talked, is not there with HbA1c. It is HbA1c is becoming cheaper, and and as I said, no need to fast, and it's not a time test. Any any time of the day, you can give a sample for HbA1c, and it's one simple blood test. Limited and drawbacks with HbA1c, it is uh, there are limitations, especially in relation to the RBC 
uh, physiology and RBC survival. So whatever affects the RBC survival, of course affects the HbA1c. So that, that if you keep in mind is more than enough. And what makes the HbA1c go up or down, uh, mainly low you see in uh, uh, hemoglobinopathies and RBC structural defects like uh, sickle cell, hemolysis, whatever may be the reason. And inoperability, I HbA1c, again we deal with lot of anemia in uh, fertility, around fertility, so iron deficiency can lead to inoperably I HbA1c. Variable effect, fetal hemoglobin, other hemoglobinopathies. So we talked about this, fasting blood sugar uh, being a, a single timed test and for chronic uh, problem like hyperglycemia, especially in uh, pre-diabetic state, maybe not a good tool to uh, diagnose, but combination, that what I do if you ask me, combination, fasting sugar with HbA1c, that gives a bit more better predictable value. Uh, so, so fructosamine, it didn't take off. It was a promising test around 20, 25 years. It didn't take off because there are other proteins or other albumin uh, variants which come in the assay. So that was, that didn't happen. Again, albumin, uh, sorry, fructosamine had other issues, sorry. Albumin had issues with other proteins being glycated. So, so these tests are still a research tools or a special test which we do in uh, special situations. I did uh, in one lady who had, who was pregnant and was having high insulin requirement, almost 200 units per day. So, so I did, left. I did uh, uh, fructosamine test as well on glycated and on top of glycated hemoglobin to see if we are dealing uh, correctly. So finally, why HbA1c? It's a, it's a it's a guideline, established guideline for diagnosing diabetes. So it is, it, is a, a, it is a tool to monitor your glycemic control, especially complication, in complications and pre complications, as I said, sets in quite early, even in pre-diabetes state. So I would say HbA1c plus fasting blood sugar is a good tool to, to diagnose uh, pre-diabetic state. Thank you. Thank you, sir. It was a wonderful session.